you realize that we have completed, without incident, our third date? Mm -hmm. I beg to differ. We had an incident? It's our fourth date. Pizza and beer. Mm -hmm. Wine and cheese. Mm -hmm. Opera and billiards. That's three. The judicial reform banquet. Four. The judicial reform banquet never happened. Besides, that that was not a real date. Well, that's unfortunate. Because mm -hmm. traditionally, between adults, completion of date number four includes with sexual activity. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, in between judges? Lauren? Hey. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Lauren got up for some little girl reason, so could you possibly dampen your ardor and not set the porch on fire? Evening, Maxine. You have lipstick on your face. I know. I like it. Oh, sorry. Want to try again tomorrow night? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Not. Definitely not. I, I have a previous engagement. Oh, work thing. Sick friend. A meeting of your coven. It's. It's my tenth reunion. Can I go with you? What? I'll go with you. Oh, definitely not. Two definitely not. That's adamant. Harvard was an interesting time for me and I was part of this of this tight knit group who can I say no and leave it at that of course another time then Sweetheart, something tells me I'm about to have the same problem. Mother doesn't want him to meet David Humble. Who's David Humble? The boyfriend she had before your father. Or perhaps it's that she doesn't want him to meet Elise Rolfson. Who's Elise Rolfson? Grandma's gone crazy. Ignore her. Your mother's best friend from law school. What was it that gang of yours called themselves? The uh, uh, Super Team of Justice? The Justice League of America. We were going to take the world by, by storm and strategy. Who's the fat guy next to him? Well, his nickname was Stammers, and that's Elise. She's pretty. Pretty enough to steal David away from your mother, Mom, thus driving her into the arms of your father. And ten years later, here we all are. Mom, I didn't pretend to like him back then. I'm certainly not going to pretend now. Maybe you'll have fun. I will. You know why? Because I had a great time in law school, and I met fascinating people who opened my eyes to the possibilities of the world. Okay. Try not to do anything bad while I'm gone. We won't. Amy, remember you are well loved and you do extremely good work. I know that. Why are you telling me that? Because, Amy, I've been to a reunion or two. Bye now. Alrighty, these files have been entered digitally into the computer base and are ready to go to storage. The facts of the files have been entered digitally into computer land. Yep, that's what I said. Files have personality. You get a sense from the social worker's handwriting and doodling, you know, what the thinking process was. Sometimes even how serious the situation with the child might be. There's a vibe to them. A vibe. It's very 60s. 
But you saw Gooby. All I'm saying is it's a bad idea to bury them away. We need the space. Now, the way you access the files is through an alphanumeric code, which... Uh, where are you going? A future alphanumeric code awaits. May I help you? Is this a place to report child abuse? Are you all right? Do you need medical attention? Those look like restraint bruises to me. Did you get those in a hospital? No, Buckley Hills. Buckley Hills is a secure facility. It's not that secure. I skipped out during a field trip to the planetarium. Ah. And by leaving Buckley Hills, um, are you violating a court order? All I know is the place sucks butt. You've got to shut him down. Let's confirm your status first. Do you remember the name of the judge who sent you there? Uh, it was a chick. Pretty, nice hair. And a black dude with a really shiny head. Judge Amy Gray. I'm going to find someone who can help you. Good. I've got a long list of complaints. Robert. Welcome to our 10th reunion. Name? Amy Gray. Okay. Gray. Gray. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Class of 92? You're not on the list. A Amy Madison Gray? Class of 92? Did you attend Harvard proper or one of the satellite schools? Harvard? I was in the law review. Try under Amy Cassidy. Michael, I'm almost glad to see you. You look terrific. Cassidy is remarried. It's, it's my ex, married man. Now it's it's Judge Amy Gray. Did you return Part B of the registration package? There was a Part B. Amy. Hey. Elise. Oh my God. Oh, it's so oh. wonderful to see you. You look lovely. I thought you two were divorced. Oh, it's a scandalous lie. No, it's true. <laughs> you two look extremely married. <laughs> well, Miss Grace, seeing as you are obviously legitimate, I'll just register you as a walk-in. There you go. How are things in Rhode Island? Uh, Connecticut. I live in Connecticut. And please don't forget to place your artifact in the time capsule. My, my what where? It was in part B of the registration package. Contents will be buried and then dug up at the 50th class reunion. Here is your events package. Don't lose your drinks tickets. Mm. Wow. Mm. Okay. <laughs> the first one of the Justice League to make judge. Very impressive. I'm certain a juvenile position is just that first rung leading to the Supreme Court. Hartford. I bet you have one of those superb homes along the river. Amy's living with her mother. Oh. In that same fabulous, funky house? She's helping her out financially. Oh, we know how that is. We just got Elisa's mother a place on the vineyard. Oh, well, good luck getting my mother to the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they misspelled your name. Maxine Gray. I got a gun. Who is this? I'm going to stick it in my mouth and pull the trigger. Um, hello, hello. What? It's a suicide threat. On your private extension? Yes. Did you get a name or recognize the voice? No, I'm not even certain whether it was a girl or boy. Kid hangs up like that. It's probably a prank. Yes, I, I think so, too. What did you bring for the time capsule? Uh, a an old picture of, of me and my friends from graduation. I brought my Best in Southwest Radio Award. Congratulations. You don't remember me, do you? <laughs> Shh. 
Charles Manners? In the flesh. You haven't changed a bit. You're still the way you were. Thank you. I just sort of got myself improved over time. I'm a radio lawyer in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But I'm hoping to make the jump to television, visual medium. So I had my teeth fixed. You remember my list? And I continued through with a total renovation. Stammers? Well, no one calls me that anymore. Stammers manners? Oh, God, you have changed. I hear you married Mike Cassidy. Yeah, yeah, well... So there's no use asking you out? N no, no, there's, there's really not. I make it a policy not to hit on married women, so I guess we're going to have to agree that our romantic possibilities passed us by in law school. Uh, alas, that must be our agreement. What? It's not supposed to be summer camp. Whatever. It's important that you learn to adapt. If you make Buckley Hills work for you, then you'll be better prepared to handle life. What they should do with that place is burn it down, grind up the ashes, and feed the ashes to pigs. They're mean. They hate me. I'll die in there. <laughs> Hey. Uh, uh, this, this says I I'm dead. I, I, I'm not dead. Who's in charge of this display? Is there, a, is there a problem? Yeah, I'm not dead. Do you realize what a large opening you're providing for a witty quip? Well, who said I was dead? How did they say I died? Of course. I'll arrange to have your name removed from the deceased list. Could you take the picture down? It's creeping me out. Uh. Hey, you're making headway. This morning we had to vouch for your very existence. Now it's simply a question of whether or not you're dead. Have you considered investing in a public relations person? No, it's just that I'd prefer not to see... God, look at my hair. Who sent in this picture? Who said I was dead and sent in this picture so that everyone would think I died of ugliness? Just take the picture down, please. I can simply remove the entire memorial display. Think of it as a lark, Amy. A funny story. You used to love funny stories. Are you suggesting that I've lost my sense of humor, at least because I haven't? Glass of wine, Amy. Thank you. And thank you. Maxine Gray. You still at work? I was hoping that you would call back. Why? Well, I was, I was, I'm worried about you. I believe you're serious, and, um, where did you get this number? You give it out. In case someone's got problems. Just call, you see. Yes, but, um, I'm sorry, I don't really, uh, remember your voice, so what is your name? Call me Zombie. Zombie, why? I'm already dead. Did you hear that? Yes, um, it's an automatic weapon, I believe. Yeah, it's a Glock 45 Josh. auto. Get on the horn and request a trace on extension 3076 for possible teen suicide, all right? I got 13 rounds, but I'm only going to need one when I blow off my head. You need to tell me how to stop you from doing that. Yeah, like you care. What, what do you want me to do? No demands to present you, no bargains to strike, no compromise to reach. You have nothing to offer me. I do not need you. That's very poetic. Yeah, well, sun comes up tomorrow, I blow off my head. I might call you before then, I might not. But if you're not there when I call, I'll do it right away. 
I'll be here. Yeah, that's what you say. I'm... What do you think? From the way the gun was described, I'd say we're dealing with a male. 12 to 14? One of yours? What, a kid who feels you let him down somehow? Chinese or Tex-Mex? I can't think about food, Sean. Chinese it is, then. Lauren is growing up way too fast. <laughs> Have you forgiven me for the birthday misunderstanding? Which I now see was totally my fault. I guess I have to forgive you. You brought me back to life. Hmm. What? I think I have a brain tumor. What? Are, are you all right? If I have a brain tumor, then how can I be all right? Oh, my God. Mike, oh, I'm so sorry. I said if I had a brain tumor. I'm not sure you heard that part clearly. Do you or do you not have a brain tumor? <sighs> Place it under the rubric of semi-romantic rhetoric. I was suggesting that my brain must be damaged for not realizing what I had when we were together. Well, don't be semi-romantic with me. You're married to Leisha. God, Michael. Lauren's attached to Leisha. Now you're looking to have a fling with your ex-wife? I don't have flings. You don't? You... <laughs> I've never had flings. You have to admit that about me. When it comes to love, I'm a very serious man. Let's look up tonight before the banquet. It's an Ayn Rand quote. We have no demands to present you, no bargains to strike, no compromise to reach. You have nothing to offer us. We do not need you. It's a speech from the character John Galt. In and Atlas Shrugged. Good luck at Buckley. I came here for help, and you narked me. Don't tell me good luck. Well, I have all your cases at our fingertips. He's not one of mine. Well, he has your private extension, which means that he knows someone who knows you. I guarantee you, somewhere in this database, is a suicidal boy in his early teens who quotes Anne Rand. Next time he calls, you get more information, I'll cross-reference, and together we save the day. If he calls again. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Does that thing tell you what time the sun rises? 614. Amy. Have you seen the Wall of Honor? Why? Am I on it? No, but I am. Look. Come here. Look. There's David. Lise. Me. Michael is giving the keynote speech. Very impressive list of achievements. I'd say the members of the Justice League are doing pretty well. On the star, anyway. Well, look at you. Representing the law in a dignified and respectful manner in the media throughout Texas and the Southwest. I was never really one of you. You guys just let me hang around. Comic relief. Charles, was I awful to you in school? Because if I was, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I didn't mind. You guys were the top dogs. I was just grateful to bask in your reflected glow. But thank you. Charles, perhaps you'd be so kind as to get Amy a drink. Of course. What are you having? Oh, no, you don't have to. As I recall, Amy's partial to slippery nipples. Does anybody still drink those? It is great to see you. 
It's gotta be what? Ten years? It's gotta be. It's our tenth reunion. Judge Amy Madison Gray. Oh, what? it's just he's just stupid. No, Don't self-denigrate, Amy. You've never fully appreciated what an amazing human being you are. Why haven't we gotten together in the last ten years? I think that's pretty obvious, David. Yeah. We're grown-ups. We married other people. Does that mean we can't have a drink once in a while? Compare lives? I'm pretty sure that's what it does mean. We made our choices. Eyes open. I don't recall having any say in the matter. But what I recall is staying in bed for two weeks and failing moot court. <laughs> I'm flattered. You flattered? Well, that you can't get me out of your mind for ten years. <laughs> I hope that isn't what fritz to you and michael shouldn't you be concentrating on keeping your own marriage together oh lisa and i are fine really better than ever then why are you hitting on me god amy i'm just trying to reestablish a friendship maybe i can be of help to you on a professional level uh-huh yeah well your pickup technique in law school was to offer help on an academic level so i guess you really haven't changed that much you certainly have Thank you. I'm beginning to realize that. Sorry to take so long. The bartender had to look it up in a book. You, know, you slide up to me. You suggest that I have dug myself into a hole and you offer to lift me out. Thank you, but I'm not willing to pay that price. Fine. Suit yourself. Rot Providence. It's Hartford, David. Providence is a whole other universe. Rand espouses this philosophy of total independence and personal fulfillment and enlightened selfishness, sort of like Attila the Hun meets Martha Stewart, you know, if that's not redundant. That's the kind of writing that adolescents pass on to each other, with the pages dog-eared and, and passages underlined. Shall I call you John Galt, like in the book? The misunderstood genius who turned his back on the world? Fine. Call me John Galt. But John Galt doesn't kill himself. He, he runs away to an earthly paradise. Or did you try that already, and uh, instead of things getting better, they just got worse? Yeah, well, running away is just a metaphor for dying. 14 years old is uh, pretty young to be reading metaphorical novels. This one's like a thousand pages long. Yeah, well, I'm 12. I'm smarter than people think. Suicide's not smart. I do what I do in my own way. That's the point. The trace of the call to the Civic Center Mall. I think that, that whoever uh, gave you this book is going to be upset to think that you're using it as a justification for suicide. Yeah, well, she's gone. Uh, gone where? You tell me. Um, what was her name? Look, I'm hanging up now. No, don't, don't hang up, please. I, I see the cops coming. You think I'm stupid. Why does everyone think I'm stupid? I, I'm not stupid. Do you see him? A 12-year-old boy. He's right there. Well, he saw you. Fine. Thank you. Place is swarming with mall rats. He probably won't call back. Not from that location. What? What are you thinking? There's a she in this. The person who gave him that book. And when I asked him what happened to her, he said, You tell me. It's a figure of speech. He doesn't know. Or else, she is one of mine. Vibes again? I don't see your computer spitting out any great answers. You think the answer's in your file someplace? Because it'll take an army of people to find anything before 6.14 tomorrow. Well, here's your chance to make a believer out of me. Sean, we're looking for someone who's been placed in a special education class of some kind. 
A 12-year-old boy who reads thousand-page philosophical novels in special education? How do you get that? It's a vibe, Sean, all right? Mock me later. Okay. Leaving early? Oddly enough, I'm not having a good time, Elise. That was a $300 tie you rather childishly ruined. Well, no one should spend that much on a tie. You're jealous. Because we all lived up to our potentials, and sadly, so did you. You had everything, and you let it slip through your fingers, and now look at you. Elise, if you've won this competition we're supposedly in, why are you so angry at me? David, Amy's burning rubber. Leaving? Before my keynote speech. You know, I'm not one of you. I used to be, but I'm not now. And don't think I don't know who told them I was dead and ugly. Not to mention paranoid. Look, I admit it. You've all shown me up. I'm a civil servant. You're masters of the universe. So I'll just go on home so you can kiss each other's kudos without having me to drag you down. Oh, hi. Well, my timing's obviously impeccable. Uh, I'm Barry Crumble. Uh, David Humble. May I just say how proud I am to meet the man who support for antitrust immunities to the Supreme Court on Seer. Thank you. And this is my wife, Elise Rolson. Very pleased to meet you, Judge Crumble. This is my um, ex-husband, Michael Cassidy. Pleasure. And Charles Manners. Cool. What, what are you doing here? Ostensibly uh, to bring you tidings of great import. In reality, I felt the need to see your face. Oh. <laughs> What's the uh, good news? Uh, Amy's going to be asked to chair a very high-level blue ribbon panel. Is that good? Hell no, it's awful. But you'll be dealing with Congress, three governors, and at least one intimate dinner at the White House, so it's very prestigious awful. Not the Federal Juvenile Justice Commission. Exactly, yes. <sighs> No, I wanted to be the first to congratulate you. Uh, what, are you leaving? Not anymore. Uh, point of fact, uh, Humboldt, is it? I'm against antitrust immunity. So you're either confusing me with somebody whose rear end you want to kiss, or you're misrepresenting my views. Wow, Judge Barry Crumble. That's got to be the high point of my whole reunion experience. Shut up, Stammers. What's it say? It's working as fast as it can. Six hours, give or take. He didn't call you, Sean. If anything happens, it's not your fault. It's not about fault, Maxine. For better or worse, he chose you to save him. I'd just like to help. You fill up my senses Like a night in the forest It's a very sappy song Like the mountains in springtime Like a walk in the rain Could you please stop? Like a storm in the desert Like a sleepy blue ocean If this is some sort of ritual for you, it may you prevent us from ever making love again. my senses. Come fill me again. Come, Come let, let me love, love you. <laughs> let, let me give my, my life, life to you. you. Let me lie, lie in your laughter. laughter.
let me always be with you. Come, let me love you. Come, love me again. It's me. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Liz, I'm I'm um wondering about some things. Yeah. Like um how you got my number, and why you called me of all people. Then I decided that you want to make me feel bad about something. Yeah, you should feel bad. If I did something to wrong you, I'd like to know what it is. Did I、um, do something to separate you from the person who gave you the book? No, that's not all. Tell me, what did I do to hurt you? You didn't choose me. I don't know what you mean. You could have chose me, but you didn't. Who did I choose? I'm choosing you now. It is not too late. I choose you. See, I I can put this right, but in order to do that, I need to to know who you are. I'm the boy whose brains will be all over the walls in less than an hour. Damn it! Damn it! Don't you hang up on me. The next scene. <coughs> We can do this. Concentrate on the girl. Say she is one of yours. You separated them. All right. Girls that I put into detention or into a detox or rehab. Help me here, Sean. Yeah, we send you a new social worker or put into a halfway house. Adopted. That's too many options. Well, that's what a computer is made for. As we increase the number of variables, the number of output potentialities actually、Sean. decreases. I'll just do it and not talk about it. Here we are. Here's a list of all the girls you've recently removed from a foster situation. Well, I don't know what I'm looking for. You'll know when you see it. Ann Cusis ran away. Diane Compton. I、uh, found a spot for her in rehab, but there's no way on God's green earth that that girl ever read a novel. Savannah Warren. I removed from a foster situation because of a sexually aggressive foster brother. Yeah, but he's seventeen. Nicole Knapp. I、uh, removed her from foster care and placed her with an aunt and uncle in upstate New York. Michelina Foster. I removed her from independent living. God, look at all these children. Nicole Knapp. She was fostered with the Sandovers, right? Yes,、yeah, Sandovers. They're not our best, so that's why I worked so hard to get her a better placement. There's four other foster kids there. There's a boy with a learning disability. Yes,、um, Danny or、um, David. Davis. It's Davis Bishop. Twelve years old. Severely dyslexic. It's him. And don't you say one word about vibes. See, you can't leave. We'll have to get to the Sandovers. No, I'll go. I can't just sit. What if it's not him? It's him. What if it's not? All right, and you're rushing off the wrong place. What if he calls back again and you're not here? I'll go. Find the police on the way. When a lady is left wide awake, a gentleman has not done his duty. <laughs> It's not that. What's wrong then? It's not like I don't appreciate what you did. I mean, not here, now, which was so. By the way, you just sailed in and laid waste to my foes and my ex-husband, which was so. I mean, your timing was so.
I'm the only one not on the wall of honor, which is so... And then my boyfriend gets me a blue ribbon la di da job so I can exercise bragging rights at my law school reunion, which is so... First, I'm not sure anything with the word boy in it. Second, I didn't get you the job. And third, you should realize that the wall of honor at a 10th reunion is nothing. It's profile. It's show-offy noise that has nothing to do with actual accomplishment. Well, if you didn't get me the job, how did I get it? When the governor's office tried to influence one of your decisions, you refused, despite the fact that it hurt you politically. Then, you risked your job and your reputation to defy a corrupt and very powerful judge. Cynicism be damned. Integrity has its own momentum. But what I think you're really worried about is whether or not we should have slept together. No, no. Uh, I was your white knight, and you're wondering whether you fell for something. Well, you didn't. I, I brought you that news because I know how competitive these, these reunions are, and I... And if it's not too politically incorrect, I seized the chance to be your white knight. Not because I wanted you to sleep with me, which was wonderful. But to see you look at me the way I want you to look at me. I said something wrong. Uh, may I just say that uh, this is not exemplar of my best pillow talk? Can we start again? <laughs> yes. Please. Will there be singing? If everything goes as I hope it will. Yes. Perhaps even yodeling. <laughs> Davis Bishop, your old social worker died, and you and Nicole were brought in here to be reassigned. Davis? And you chose Nicole. Do you know why? For no reason, Davis, for no reason at all. It wasn't that I didn't want you or that I did want Nicole. I can do that for you, Davis. I think someone's coming. I didn't realize how special you are, and I wish I'd chosen you. Goodbye. Man. No, don't, don't hang up, please. Please don't hang up, Davis. Hello? Hello? Somebody tell me what's happening, would you please? Please tell me what's happening. Yes. Maxine, he's all right. We uh, got him in time. We grabbed his arm and the shot hit the ceiling. How could you leave me hanging like that? What? How could you? you Sean understand? Potter, you are a stupid and a thoughtless man. Maxine, he's all Do you right. hear me? Attention, class. Uh, 
Excuse me. I wanted to say that I am I'm not living with my mother for financial reasons. It's by choice. She's an amazing human being. We can't comprehend a hundredth of what she goes through every day. She's wise, and she is good, and she is strong. And if I have made any good decisions over the last few years, it's because of her influence. And I'm living with her because I want that for my daughter. Maxine. Hey, Maxine. I'm sorry for what I said to you. I, uh, I hope you'll forgive me. He let us stop him, Maxine. Whatever you said to him worked. The way I spoke to you was unpardonable. I didn't mean it. I know. I wish you'd tell me you forgive me, if you do. Maxine, I will forgive you if you look where I'm looking. We saved him once. Now you gotta keep on saving him. Up to him. Maxine. Yes, Robert. I never had a child die under my care before, so I'm not sure how to proceed. Who? Who died? The girl that came in yesterday. She used her shoelaces to hang herself. Pamela Taylor? She killed herself. Yeah. At Buckley Hills. Speak with Sean, Robert. My hands are full right now. Next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, Amy considers tougher security after vandals break into her home. Judging Amy is next. <laughs>